All right, everyone, Eric Reynolds with your Fox 10 News Now update. After 20 years, the longest war in American history is finally over. The U.S. completing its military withdrawal from Afghanistan. Major General Chris Donahue becoming the last American soldier to leave Kabul International Airport. But according to the State Department, roughly 200 Americans still remain in Afghanistan. There are longtime residents of Afghanistan who have American passports and who were trying to determine whether or not they wanted to leave. Many are dual citizen Americans. The war in Afghanistan has resulted in almost 2,500 Americans killed in action. And the total cost of the 20 year war is around $2.3 trillion. We're getting a look now at that tornado damage in Saraland. The Fox 10 News drone getting footage of the ripped up plantation motel on Highway 43. Now you can see where the twister just peeled off some of the rooftop. The rooms left totally exposed. The Ida spawned tornado touched down shortly after noon on Monday. Rooms totally demolished here, missing roofs, walls and windows. Cars also shattered, trees down all across the building as well. The nearby poles bent in half and siding ripped off of the buildings. Now the terrified residents inside say that the twister moved in quickly. I turned around to grab a cigarette. I had my cigarette sitting right there. And as soon as I turned around, the whole roof just exploded. Everything started to come flying in. I jumped from there, laid in the bathtub and just waited it out. When I came up out, I didn't know what to think. Criola also receiving tornado damage, several houses damaged and several trees also knocked down. The devastation left behind was not immediately seen from the roadway, but from behind one home, you can actually see the full story. An oak tree smashed into this homeowner's truck and into his home as well. John Brooks works with professional roofing and construction company. His team jumped into action to help. This gentleman over here has got a tree all the way into his kitchen and uh, we're going to have to get the, the, the limbs off the house and then uh, tarp it from there to, uh, to get him properly dried in. We can't dry it in with the tree on there. Now, fortunately, there were no injuries reported in Creola. Our meteorologist Michael White with your Fox 10 storm tracker report. We've got ourselves another band of showers and storms pushing their way through this morning. We've got a wind advisory. I'm sure a lot of you have noticed the howling wind across the Gulf Coast. That's in place until 10 a.m. The good news is the high wind threats we've been experiencing as a result of Ida are finally going to begin to subside after we get this band of rain to push its way through. You can spot that on the radar and this is the last of the rain bands associated with Ida. And you can see lightning torrential downpours are approaching the Interstate 65 corridor. You got another band ahead of that that's stretching from Evergreen down to about Brat, Florida. And all of those storms are working their way from Atmore to Flomaton and Bruton just to the east of I-65 and around State Highways 113 and 41. And then the last leg of the storms rolling through Chinchula, approaching Saraland, Satsuma, Criola, West Mobile, Dawes, and eventually Grand Bay and then the eastern shore. And once we get this band of storms through, you're going to end up going much drier for the afternoon and evening. Where is Ida? Well, Ida now a tropical depression, the center of which is over Tupelo, and she's going to keep veering to the north and east through Tennessee and eventually into parts of Virginia and then back off the northeast coast by the end of the week. Counterclockwise motion is steering those showers and storms from west to east down here on the Gulf Coast, but we get an improvement in our weather by this afternoon and we see lower humidity humidity by the end of the week, setting the stage for a really nice Labor Day weekend. On the future cast, storms will work their way from the west to the east, and you'll notice by the time we get to noon, things end up going mostly dry, and we actually get some peaks of sun back out on the Gulf Coast. As we head in toward the late afternoon and early evening, a few showers, though, will try to track their way in from the north. Here's a look at how the next seven days are going to stack up and you can see high temperatures get up to near 90 degrees beginning tomorrow. We go much drier for the end of the week and the Labor Day weekend, that unofficial end of summer with temperatures getting into the upper 60s both Friday and Saturday morning and Labor Day weekend. Not bad. Rain chances right at 20% each day, so mostly dry conditions with pretty decent supplies of sunshine coming back. We are going to keep you updated on your forecast throughout the day right here on Fox 10 News Now.